Welcome to Deardorf TV's podcast. I'm out here in the woods. Right now we're social distancing ourselves from motherfuckers because everybody wants to sneeze and touch and finger fuck everything. Got my boy Leroy Biggs out here with me. I'm one of those fuckers. Yeah, you fucking kind of licked my window and touched everything in my goddamn well. truck on the way out here. Well, but, yeah. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about this, a bunch of random shit today. Uh, I think the first thing we need to talk about is this goddamn coronavirus, because I'm not supposed to be here in Hunky Dury, Cheatham County. I'm supposed to be in goddamn Milwaukee, putting on a fucking show, because I'm a fucking showman. But this goddamn Kung Flu, <laughs> this Kung Flu, and now look at us. Now we're in a creek. Now we're in a creek. Our feet's wet. I should be in fucking Wisconsin. But no. Ain't it cold in Wisconsin? Yeah. Yeah, see, look. We're out here short. Well, I'm in short sleeves. There's so much tears in It's okay. breezy. Because I'm going to get sick because I ain't got a damn hoodie on. But. You rubbed your eyes. You first said that. Baby. That's mm-hmm. fucked up. I hope I don't. Look, I'm going to get pink eye. I'm touching everything at Walmart earlier. Dude, you know, the, one of the bad things about the coronavirus thing is everybody's like, oh, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Yeah. But well, here's the thing. Let's say you touch your phone, right? Sitting there doing shit on your phone, blah, 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 whatever. Well, then you got to go wash your hands for whatever reason. All right? You touch your fucking phone again, the germs that was on your phone, it's back on your fucking hands, okay? That's not, I mean, washing your hands, okay, that's a big deal. But think about all the shit you're touching with your dirty ass mittens and then have to touch again after your hands are clean, okay? It's just, it's... Some of that shit's bullshit. Not to mention, dude, the quarantine shit, I don't think is really going to work as well as they they think and hope. Just for the fact of, um, man, you'd have, they'd have to figure out how long this virus stays on particular objects like money. Right? I mean, look, think about money. Yeah. Everybody and their mom is touching the money. All right, whether they're sick or they ain't sick. All right, money's walking around in your pocket so it's close by. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? All kinds of money, clean money, junky money, all the money. Stripper ass money. You know what I mean? Mechanic money. Deerdorf money. I bet all the junkies ain't, they're, they're probably not scraping the cocaine off with all the I bet you they right ain't now. sick. Dude, true, true. I bet you the junkies ain't sick. Uh, I'll tell you one thing to watch out for, because it's not really affecting kids. You know how nasty fucking kids are, dude? I mean, seriously, you know how nasty kids are? Hey, they're building their immune system. No, 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 like, yeah, it's good for them, but I'm talking about when they touch the 60-year-old bastard that's on his on his. Why way is out. there a little kid touching? This ain't Joe Biden. We ain't touching little kids here. Granddad? <laughs> what if it's a grand... People have granddads. That motherfucker wants to... I bet that so much has really fucking sucked being quarantined. He can't sniff nobody. I bet he doesn't realize what's going on. Probably not. He probably has Alzheimer's. I bet you he thinks it's a beautiful Sunday. It is a beautiful it Sunday. It is a beautiful Sunday. And here we are, making this podcast, yep. social distancing ourselves in this creek. Yep. Deardorf called me and said, hey, man, listen, you're hot right now. You're on fire. You're fucking, you're just, you're a walking check. And I want to start a podcast. I need a phenomenal <laughs> actor, rapper, and just all-around uh, person, an all-around good person to help me co-host this podcast. Well, I told him send the check. And here he is, but there could only be one sex symbol on this show, so here I am. <laughs> I got kids I ain't even met. You met your kids? Yeah, I was about to say, you just had a kid here. <laughs> He's a pretty good dad, never mind. Oh, uh, fuck. But I'm not right. sure what to do with my hands here. Shut the fuck up. So, little insight, if y'all don't know, don't know how much y'all follow him, don't know, you may not even know who the fuck I am. Uh, We're all from a little community called Pond Creek. Everybody knows each other. Everybody's junkies buying from everybody's dealer. Everybody's mama's cleaning their other mama's house because, you know, that's how it goes down. Uh, I ran around with Robert's fucking brother-in-laws for years, years, years. I ain't married. I ran around with... Robert's baby associates. Yeah, baby I mama ran around <laughs> baby mama brother, man. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, from the time I was about 14 to about 18, I developed alcoholism at Deardorf's house. Hey, speaking of that, I got me a cold one here. Got me some here. I was gonna bring I was gonna bring pot, but 
there's enough firearms in the uh, truck to uh yeah i'm not driving constitutive search i ain't driving either no fuck that i'm driving i'm driving the boat the boat yeah when, when dude the did you notice all the motherfuckers at the store this morning with boats filling up their goddamn boat hey, y'all motherfuckers know something we don't y'all expecting a flood what if they're fishing bro have fish on tap like sandwiches, bro. I've been fishing countless times and I didn't need a boat. I could just fish off the fucking bank. <laughs> Maybe they want to enjoy themselves, douchebag. I'd love to have a boat right now. I don't. You, I had one. You could have got it. No, instead we got a fold-out chair and tables and we're here. Huh? Hmm? We're good. We should do a podcast on a boat. Buy me a boat and I'll do a podcast. You just said you had a boat. We cut it up last week. Oh, yeah. Go watch the video. Yeah. Yep. Uh. -huh. It's up right now. And it depends on how long my fucking video guy right here takes to edit it and post this one. We not we might be over the coronavirus epidemic by the time this posts. We'll see. But if not, if I you do get this information in time, uh, you know what we're talking about. You got any uh, tips on staying at home? What you supposed to be doing? Yeah. What you gonna be the doing? Fuck home. Smoking pot. <laughs> you know, writing on music. Oh yeah, album Dose in the works. That's what I'm doing during quarantine. I'm stacking up a little content for y'all to come out. Meanwhile, this is getting edited and put out too. You want to stay home? No, you don't, but you got to, funky hey, bitch. Album Dose might already be out by the time this gets posted. He, he's slow. I just want to I just want to point out his video guy seems like a very nice guy. <laughs> you just want the fucking video to be out before your album. <laughs> <laughs> <I didn't know. laughs> Leroy Biggs, lost for words. Yeah. I have done it. This day is a fucking success. He called me on my bullshit, man. So, I'm not much for fucking hoax, but let me tell you what I think about this shitty ass coronavirus. Fucking General Sal and his soldiers were getting fucking biological warfare ready to come and get us sick. It broke out in China. Everyone's worried, everyone's worried. They send one of those little fucking bastards over here and now everyone's got it. We're going to war. They send one of them, little, no. That's not how it happened. We're going to that's war. Not, hey, what, here's another thing too though. You notice, did you notice when, all right, so the coronavirus all broke out in fucking China or whatever, and they were, everybody, the whole world was watching them and see all of their measures, what the fuck they're taking. Did you see all them cool ass trucks spraying all the alcohol <laughs> water? Did you see that? They had semi trucks with big tanks on the back of a fan spraying oh, yeah, yeah, okay. water with alcohol in all in the air. How is it that China has all the cool shit? We don't have no fucking trucks spraying no alcohol water in the air. Just China. They always be doing some over the top stuff. I think one or two motherfuckers in there might have an idea, and then everybody else just agrees. Why the hell? They are a communist country, so I mean, that's, that's generally how it happens, isn't it? Why are they all short? They eat rice, motherfucker. Rice is short. Yeah, I mean. No. What? What's that? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Talk. Oh, that one. Oh, that's something that grew up next to a nuclear factory or something. Next to a goddamn power plant. He grew up in Harlem. <laughs> what the fuck? But yeah, uh, I think it's a, I think it's an act of war, and I think we should go over there with one of our nice, nice nuclear bombs and show and become two and o. Two, two and o. Yeah. But I want one of those trucks with the fucking water fan on it before we blow them up. We probably build one at your house. You probably have the body for it. I read the thing too. It said that the uh, was it Korea, one of the Korea McDonald's, all their fucking trucks have been running off of uh, the grease from the McDonald's fries. It's 2007. Why can't we do that? Cause you die. What? No, Think about they're, that. They're running These the trucks off the grease. What's called me? Anyways, continue. The National Guard just called them to shut down our fucking podcast. They're about to fly over. Yeah. yeah. But, uh. Got a drone. No, man, seriously, I mean. Got a fucking pine cone drone somewhere. Think about it. When I came home from Florida, first shows I did, Florida opening up for church. So far, I've heard I've done good. Read about me. Uh. I got sick, bro. I got sick bad when I came back. 
Dude, it's been a month. Shut up. But I had like 140 You're the reason why motherfuckers have the coronavirus in Tim County. You brought that shit from Florida. Keep talking. You brought it from Florida. Keep talking. I got to sneeze right damn now. Dude, bought that way. I got to sneeze yep. right Dude, damn Dude, you're going to take out the camera guy. I won't oh. sneeze on you, bro. I'd sneeze on him. No, you have a baby. I'd feel bad about that. Okay, so you come back from Florida. Continue. All right, yeah. Came back from Florida. Got sick. Got over it. Uh, hell, one of uh, uh, a buddy I hung around with, I know you hung around, we had a buddy die from the flu. Huh? Just two weeks ago, Rod. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they said they said that was the flu. Influenza. I'm telling you, dude, there's something up with this shit. Motherfuckers die from the flu every year, and we ain't never shut school. 50 motherfuckers die that were going to die anyways. I mean, I, I mean, the coronavirus is killing 80-year-old people. You know what I mean? The flu would kill 80-year-old people. This is just a form of the flu, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. Why don't we have it? One person in Cheatham County got it. Well, don't get us wrong. There's probably about 10,000 nerds that live in fucking Cheatham County. The rest of the motherfuckers are doing stupid shit like this in the middle of a goddamn creek. Hey, this is educational. It is educate. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. We are now teachers. Not only am I a rapper, I'm a fucking teacher. I'm a life coach. I need my federal funding. Okay. I don't need no federal funding. Y'all just don't look at my money. Keep your money. Don't look at mine. <laughs> well. 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 Anyway. It's always China doing some dumb shit. They want to sort some bitches. They eat dogs and cats and everything else. Fucking sharks. Fucking squid. Pretty much anything that fucking crawls and fucking wakes up in the morning. I wonder why they eat dog and cat, man. For easy, real. Easy to get. They're just walking around. They ain't got a hunt for They them. don't have pets? I don't know. You know any Chinese people? Yeah, I don't know a Chinese. Yeah, but he's been here all his life. Well, tell him to call one of his aunts, cousins, or fucking some kind of family member to ask him. The motherfucker listens to Tupac. I don't think there's any China left in here. Yeah, he's domesticated. Yeah. yeah. Well, fuck. We're going to have to, hey, if there's any China people, well, no, because these motherfuckers, if they're from China, they probably can't understand what They know what saying. they did. <laughs> if you're from China and you're a fan of him, we love you. We appreciate you. You know what you did. Call your 80-year-old uncle sitting in that fucking dojo. And you tell him, hey, Ling Hai, blow your fucking nose in a towel. Don't do it on the bus, you bastard. They should right. come from them eating bats. That's well, another I thing. I don't trust a motherfucker that eats a bat. Ozzy? Hey, I ain't never talked to him. And there's a good reason for that. I don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh. Fuck this virus. I'm pissed about it. We should be doing shows. I'm out of a job. You need a handsome plus size model. Your mama lonely. She need a little love time. Hit me up because I need the work. He's on Tinder. I am Tinder. <laughs> Let's talk about your fucking truck. I want to talk about this. What's that? They talk about rappers, vehicles. Fuck this. This motherfucker ain't never rapped once. He got more vehicles than half the rappers I know. What's up with that, dude? Hustle game strong. When are you going to give me a vehicle? I would have gave you that boat last weekend, but you didn't show up, so I destroyed it. Hurt my feelings, so I destroyed it. Hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Yeah, oh, hurt my feelings. You know, I got I, a Blazer, one owner. One owner. <laughs> it's famous. Been in YouTube videos and shit. We'll keep it for content. I want to get you follow me. I'll get it started. Basically, we're simple folk. It doesn't mean we're stupid. We're countryer than fuck. I've lived here my whole life. Robert, eating fucking sunflower seeds off a coronavirus infested table, has lived here his whole life. His koozie says Deerdorf. We don't even buy koozies. We make our own fucking koozies. We're fans of ourselves, and you should be too. 
and I think that's why it fucking goes. I'm doing a podcast in a creek. <laughs> Thank God they suspended rent. You know why? I'd be living in this goddamn creek. Well, you stay at the house. What I, I got? I pushed the couch. He on. got me a blazer. He got me a fucking couch on the patio, dude. Fuck. I'll be the I best. Got, I ain't got no patio. <laughs> hey, grab it. <laughs> we'll put you out to film or something. We'll throw a picture tent. But anyways, <laughs> this podcast right here. I don't even know if you really want to call it a podcast. It's just a a discussion forum. Let's, let's just throw it like that. I don't, I it's really don't content care. for his fucking channel because he's running out of ideas, you piece of shit. Fuck no. <laughs> this is your idea. Yeah, it was my idea, and I'm glad he gave me props. But really, but anyways, we're not going to be like any other podcast you see. We're not going to be in some fancy little fucking room that I've decorated with $100 worth of bullshit. We're in a fucking creek. We're just showing you that you can do this shit. And be simple, okay? Yeah. The fucking table I use for parties when I have them. Fucking, these are some chairs. Tables. That I'm pretty sure somebody stole from somewhere, and I'm making a fucking. You these know, came I'm, from a wedding. This definitely. They, they, they definitely yeah, came, from, came a from a wedding. wedding. Yeah. I uh, need them though. You know what I mean? So I got them. Oh, uh, anyway. Um. Uh, and we're just talking about this random shit. And you can watch the whole video. You can skip through it. Either way, you're gonna get some good content. You're gonna yeah. get us some good shit. You're gonna see the connecting bond. That makes us all fucking creakers. Exactly. Check this out. I could go MIA for a month, not call Robert, not call anybody, fucking nobody. I come up a month later, bro, I need y'all now. I'm off 51st Avenue, I said some shit I shouldn't have said. We need backup. They may be pissed, backup's coming. And that's why I'm in a creek. Cause I care. <laughs> <laughs> but for real though, I mean, even growing up in school and shit like that, when we told people where we were from, they knew exactly where the fuck we were from. Oh, y'all creakers, huh? Mm -hmm. We just look at them like, mm -hmm. how you know? It's because generation after generation after generation, motherfuckers know who the real ones are, okay? Motherfuckers in that kind of community know when we pull up on the fucking scene and start making noise, you know what I'm saying? They know exactly who the fuck we are. And that's carried on for, I mean, hell. At I least, to, at I least 40 years. No, I, I'm talking about, this, no, it's been going on for like over 100. There's a fucking book, Pong Creek. I got it at the house. You can read it. I mean, Creekers go back a long time, you know what I'm saying? And it's not necessarily like, uh, I mean, people are oh, all in a gang. It ain't no kind of gang or nothing like that. It's a, it's a real tight community, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Everybody's there for each other. Everybody kind of does. Right. We don't do a whole lot of money transaction. Hell, we trade you this barter. right here for that over there. Barter. Hell, that's all it is. I, I give you this. I give you this grill right here if you need it. Hell, we'll get, catch you back. You might fucking have something I need or something one day. I don't own not one fucking tool because I know Robert owns about ninety percent of the tools I'll ever need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just. Uh, I think it's definitely a last of a dying breed scenario, man. Everybody's fucking, fucking everybody over nowadays. There's a money stipulation with fucking everything. Well, not to mention, uh, you know, our whole lives, you know, we're growing up out here in the country and different stuff like that. People from the city, oh, y'all, uh, you know, you wear boots all the time. You ain't got no tissues. You ain't got no penny loafers or whatever the hell they call them. You right. ain't got with this and that. No, motherfucker. I wear boots every day. The only time I wear tennis shoes is when I go to the gym. That's it. I wear boots every day, and I have since I was in fifth grade. And, uh, fuck. Since I became a rapper, I, I started wearing other shoes. I'm not gonna lie. No, I wear boots every I became fuck. bougie as fuck. Uh, but what I'm saying is, motherfuckers looked at us, and they think we're fucking simple and simple minded, whatever else. But look who's the one that's freaking out right now during this epidemic. These motherfuckers in these big ass cities freaking out because their goddamn grocery store might be closed. Or their little bar down the street might be closed. Motherfucker, we got chickens. We got goats in the yard. You know what I mean? Hell, we'll fucking go down here and fish and hunt and do whatever we need to do. Not to mention, grow some shit out in the yard and make our own fucking liquor. You know what I mean? We ain't got to have none of that shit. We can live off the grid and be perfectly fine. You know what I mean? So, now who's simple-minded? I will say I've had their liquor. You may go blind. It will get you fucked up. You may go blind. So anyway, being said, uh, this is Daredorf TV, and uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know if it's gonna be podcast number one or what the title's gonna be or anything like that. 
either way it goes, this is my guest right here. This is Leroy Biggs. And uh, we're going to ask some questions right here. We're going to get to know Leroy because, once again, y'all see the crazy shit that I do. And most of y'all follow me on Instagram. And I don't know if y'all follow this dude here. So, y'all going to have to learn from him right here. Y'all going to have to learn. All right. So, what made you want to be a rapper, man? I was good at it. From what age? Uh, I sort of stumbled upon on it probably when I was 12, 13. I went to school at uh, Harpeth Middle School. Uh, they have the football field for the high school. Everyone goes there for a Friday night football when it's in season. And uh, all these other little country bastards were rappers. That's what they said. They were rappers. Well, they sucked. I didn't know how to rap, but I knew they fucking sucked. So that next, uh, that next football game, I went and uh, I started and I battle rapped our buddy Greer. Yeah. That's the first time I ever rapped. I rap battled Greer. And that motherfucker got hype as fuck. He got hype as fuck. He like, I mean, because there's no, like, it just started. It just started with a fucking freestyle. Never wrote anything. Never even thought about doing it. Fucking country ass kid. Never even thought about being a fucking rapper. It started at a fucking high school football game. So you just fucking, yeah, you'd never done it before, but you listened to him and he was like, yeah. They suck. I could do way better than that. And they're supposed to be the ones that are good at this One hundred percent. So you're like, fuck, I'm going to have to show them. I mean, yeah. One hundred percent, man. I remember. So I only went to maybe like two or three football games the whole time I was in high school. Because I didn't really do all that shit. I wasn't in that little clique. I didn't I didn't really talk to a whole lot of people. But I remember one time I did go, me and Ryan both went. And I remember you over there rapping. There was like a big group of people and you was over there rapping. It could have been that time. It could have been a different time. But I remember going to one football game, and you was like in a group of people, and you was over there rapping. So uh, that specific time, that was when I actually started thinking about pushing it. So what happened there was uh, we got clicks. We're fucking creakers, okay? Well, we were the edge of our school district. We had to go across to fucking Kingston Springs for school at Harpeth. Well... There's another group of fucking, you know, fucking kids that uh, were rappers. And he came up to me wanting to rap battle. So he rap battled first. It was cool. There's probably about 30 people there. And uh, he was wearing a Nike shirt. I remember this because it was fucking cool as fuck. He's wearing a Nike shirt and then a starter zip-up jacket. <laughs> and I said he looked like the Fresh Prince of Welfare. Well, a cop that was at the fucking football game came and started listening to it. Well, a group of 10, 15 kids and a cops around, that made more people. They thought it was a fight or something. By the time what he was talking about, this is no exaggeration, there is video somewhere too. I had doubled the amount of crowd on this fucking track around this football field watching this rap battle than was watching the fucking football game. Our high school team sucked. No one came there to fucking watch the football team they came there to get drunk and buy pot and that's just that's at least why i went there and uh yeah that's the night you were talking about i made uh i made like 150 dollars because it got to the point i'd keep rapping and motherfuckers would throw money in the middle of the fucking uh track or whatever and by the time i got done uh he was a rapper and a stripper <laughs> was it was, was it just dollar bills uh, there was a twenty. It was like a hundred. It was like a hundred one dollar bills, and then I had like a twenty and a couple fives. Yeah, motherfuckers, you was rapping so good. Yeah, motherfuckers, throwing their lunch money. Legit. <laughs> That's legit. Legit. Well, <clears throat> uh, when did your first album? Uh, my first album dropped last year, like August of last year. <clears throat> what was the title? Album number one. Really? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We keep it simple. I heard a lot of people, you know, oh, when you make an album, you want it to all flow together and you want to have a theme or something like that. First album ever did. No music on YouTube. No music at all anywhere. It was called album number one. It was number 39 in all music on uh, iTunes. And it, uh, it capped at number five in the rap genre. And there wasn't no theme to that motherfucker. And to give you a little insight, the album I'm working on now is called Album Dose. Dose meaning two, 
in Spanish. <laughs> Why the hell did you want to throw a Spanish number in there? Because I already did album number one. So I figured I'd do album dos. And the third one will probably be in German or something. I don't know. Yeah. French? No, no, I don't fuck with the French. <laughs> you don't fuck the with the French. The French lost my support. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, so the first album blew up. So then you did the second one. All right. Is this the first year you went on tour? Or supposed to be on tour? <laughs> because the fucking coronavirus fucked up my tour. <coughs> yeah, but, uh, so this, uh, we're March. It's March right now. Don't know if that fucks up when the video comes out or what, but, uh. We'll see how long. Yeah, pressure's on you, guy. So, uh, I started working on the album. Uh, Ryan really helped me get the album going and stuff. That's just what it is. And then, uh, yeah, this is my first year of touring. I'm opening for Ryan up church. Uh, my first shows were February 6th, 7th, and 8th. I had two nights in Sanford, Florida at the barn. Amazing place. Met the venue owners. They love my dumb ass for whatever reason. I don't know. And then uh, the third night was in Fort Myers, Florida, way down south with all my Cuban buddies at the ranch. And, uh, man, I had a blast. People had a blast. I, I ended up getting sick from it. I probably shook fucking 5,000 hands in the fucking weekend. Uh, signed probably 20, 30 titties. Fucking five six hundred shirts you know just as much as i could had a blast threw out my voice had fucking my throat was closing people said i had laryngitis all this kind of happy horse bullshit and uh it went good man i went what, all out it sounds like hell yeah went all out that's what we do on the motherfucking creek but just to throw us out there i know he said that ryan has helped about a bunch every starter rapper Really, even big rappers, they have another big name behind them that helps support them and lead them in the right direction. Right. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Oh, 100%. And I would say the only thing different, because it's exactly what it is, 100%, uh, the only thing different is, hell, he didn't, you know, it wasn't something like, oh, he had to get in contact with me, or he had to get in contact, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you knew how to get in contact with me. He knew how to get in contact with me. I ran with his brother, so it's just like, you know, it goes back to the cricket. Exactly. It, everybody, everybody looks out for one another. Hell, Ryan's already big. And I guess you see, you know, senior coming up. Hell, why not help you out and, and lead you in the right direction to speed the speed of the process and that, as far as the insight. You know what I mean? So you're not yeah. rambling around in the dark. Yeah. Um, I, you well, know, that I, I would I, say that nothing is given; everything is earned. Well, that you know and I will say, you know, coming up, hell, we grew up on old country music, all that, all that, and. Uh, but we grew up on a lot of fucking Nashville rap and Southern rap in general. Uh, and I will say that has helped because uh, a lot of the people, you know, you may look up to as far as whether you just like their shit or you really like them as a person. They aren't who they, they aren't who they say they are. You know what I mean? I've met, I've met people that at one point in my life when I was 15, 16 years old, fucking off in high school doing what I did, uh, I looked up to and I can honestly say now like you know I was I was uh it was all false there was no reason to look up to these people everybody has their problems and the people we fucking idolize and shit man they got the worst goddamn problems oh yeah there's a couple a couple people I'm not gonna say their name that I listened to their music in high school and stuff like that and I've got the chance to meet them in real life and straight douchebags man straight douchebags but there's a lot of people that I have met that are like real deal, like hell struggle Jennings, he's real deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. What you see is what you get. You know what I mean? He ain't no fucking false advertisement there. Oh yeah. He's the still same crazy West Nashville bastard he was fucking an okay. Oh, um I listen to Jelly Rolls music a bunch. Um, I haven't met him in person yet, you know what I mean? So but I mean he has hit me up through Instagram and shit like that, talking bullshit and so I mean he seems like what he advertises is what you get. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, One other thing, the biggest divide is because, you know, the two, you know, those two, Jelly and Struggle, they grew up like us in the sense of, you know, we never came into money. There was never an abundance of shit like that. You know what I mean? Fucking, my childhood was, 
you know, if the fucking, if the satellite was on and fucking dish was on, okay, that's cool, but that was fucking 5% of the time we spent. You know, fuck, we grew up based off our imaginations. Oh, like, yeah. You oh, yeah. Yeah, you ain't fucking, you ain't staying in the house, you gotta go outside, you gotta Hell, do some yeah. shit outside. Kids, like, you know, fucking... Everybody and their mama always wants to come up with the, we ain't never had shit and then we got it, but... This is one of them real life situations, you know what I mean? Right, right. Like, this is a true real life situation. Hell, I never had shit. Fucking had to build my own truck for my first truck. Um, hell, been living on my own since I was 18 years old, blah, blah, blah. Not gonna get into that spill, but right. I would say that when when you have a come up like that and you come up from nothing, you appreciate stuff greater and you right. strive harder to, to make it happen, you know what I mean? 100%, and you know, not just that, but like coming from a, a a poor, you know, a poor country setting, uh, a lot of our role models were fuck ups, and the reason they were our role models is because They're we real. saw their fuck ups, and they we were real. We had to go off of their fuck ups. You know what I mean? Fuck, I would, uh, fuck, I got pl I got plenty of family I can't talk to because they're fucked off on drugs or whatever they're doing you know i spent a lot of times with alcoholics uh just that's who we were raised by man though we, we really had a, a study guide for life of knowing the wrong and you know the rights